before I forget. Hey, Michelle. Lots of Michelles. There's always lots of Michelles. I'm a Jennifer. There's always lots of Jennifers too. Okay, Michelle's painting. Christy's just watching. Um, okay, so Alicia's painting. Good. Um, I don't know where I was going with that thought that I had that I no longer have. I gotta put my, my old reading glasses on here. Um, <clears throat> so I had a lot of ladies in my painting membership that wanted to paint this gnome. So I just thought it would be a good opportunity to just kind of do um, a project, you know, or a painting, um, whatever, on uh, Facebook. So anybody that wanted to watch could. So that's that's why we're doing this. So I have all my supplies out. Hopefully you guys were able to find most of the supplies pretty easily. A lot of the paint colors can be um, traded out for, um, you know, similar colors, similar brand, or, you know, another brand. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, let's see here. And so, uh, okay, I think I got everything. Michelle said, will you be doing, oh, will you be doing another hand lettering course in the future? I'm signing up this time. Yes, Michelle, I will be offering that again. I just have so much going on that it's really difficult when you have multiple courses out there that you're like, trying to talk about and answer questions and all that kind of stuff. So Tuesday, I'm releasing a Procreate um, course for like beginners. And so I just didn't want to have that going and the sign lettering course going. It's just a lot to, you know, think about and, and whatever. So I just decided to close the lettering course and then I will open that up again. I'm thinking, like sometime May, June, July-ish. Um, I'd like to do it like at the beginning of the summer because I think a lot of people are gonna have time to kind of take it during the summer. So I really would like to do it May or June, but it just kind of depends on, you know, how things are going there. Hey, Carol. <clears throat> okay, so, hey, Latricia. Um, so I put a link in the, not up there, <laughs> in the um, notes for this. If anybody wants to paint this, you can, um, the template is free. And then there's a supply list also that's free. Um, and then you can buy the blank cut out from me if you want to. Um, there will be a link in there if you want to purchase that. Or if you can cut it out yourself, then you can just use this template here. So the template will print out in multiple sheets, just in case some of you are not familiar with how this works. Um, it will print out in multiple pages and you just kind of piece them together like a puzzle and tape them. And then I cut out my shape. So if you're gonna cut out the sign yourself, you could just lay this on a sheet of wood and trace it and then cut it with a jigsaw. So it's pretty, pretty easy um, to do. Um, so I already did all that because nobody wants to sit and watch me do all that. Um, and the sign is just a tiny, 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 like a fourth of an inch um, bigger than my template. I think my husband didn't cut it the right size. But maybe he did and maybe it was me that was wrong. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm just going to line this up. Probably, I'm going to look right here and just make sure this part is aligned because I want this um, groove right here to be straight. Everything else is going to, you know, it'll be fine if it's not lined up. But I want like just this area needs to be kind of lined up well. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this there and then this is the graphite paper that i use it's basically like carbon paper so there's a shiny side and a matte side you're going to want to put the shiny side down and these last if you're not familiar with using these these last for a really long time i will use one sheet like this for <clears throat> probably like six months 
and for all my orders and, and everything. So um, they, it lasts a long time and they're really inexpensive. So just get a pencil and we're gonna trace on some of the design. We're not gonna do this part right now. We'll come back and do that um, after we get the white on, just cause I feel like it's easier than trying to, you know what? No, we'll just trace all of it except for the words. We'll just make it easy. Okay, never mind me. You know, I work things out in my head as I go. <laughs> so I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna trace and you can use a pen, a pencil, anything really. Um, and I'm just gonna trace out the nose. And these don't have to be like perfect. You're just kind of trying to get, you know, an idea if you mess up or whatever you can go back and fix it with your paintbrush. No big deal. And as I'm doing this, um, <clears throat> if you guys have any questions, just put them in the chat and I'm going to try to periodically kind of go back and look at questions so I can answer any questions that you have. And I will also be emailing this replay. There, if you signed up for the, or if you put your email in to get, the template emailed to you, um, you'll also be added to a follow-up reminder list um, and you'll get the replay. We'll, we'll email you the replay. So I'll load it up on YouTube and um, send you the link. So if you want the link, make sure I have your email so I can make sure you get it just because I didn't want to bug my whole entire email list with the replay if they didn't want it. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna trace out his little hands. Sometimes where you tape and where the paper meets up, like it'll kind of make your pencil slip a little bit. So just be aware of that. It's annoying when it happens. Obviously, I didn't line my template up very well, but it's a square, so we're good. So I'm not gonna do the word yet because we need to paint it green first before we get the word. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this part here and this part here. So it's behind me here. Now I will be, hey Annette, hey Carrie, hey Jill. Jill's gonna try to paint along, good. Jill's in my membership, so hopefully she can keep up with me. Um, hey, uh, Heidi, <laughs> I almost called it, hey Ed. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be painting, you know, not super slow, so don't feel like you have to keep up with me, but obviously I don't want this to drag on for those that, you know, aren't painting long. Um, so you can see right here where my, if this will let me, every time this does this to me. Gotta tell me that we're streaming live, even though it already told me that. Um, right here is where I had my clips, so these didn't go all the way to the edge, so I'm just going to kind of just finish them. It doesn't really, you know, they don't have to be perfectly exactly what the template is, just as long as, you know, you have an idea, and I'm going to fix that too. And then right here, and I just like to show you guys this just in case you have the same problem, um, right here, this didn't quite line up perfectly. So you can get a, like an eraser if you want. Either you can paint over it, which is what I normally do, but because this, we're gonna be painting that part white and that's graphite paper, sometimes it can be like get smeary looking. So I'm just gonna erase this part right here. And I'm just gonna try to like connect it like that. Again, it does not have to be exact. That's where my pencil slipped. Um, okay, so all that looks good. 
All right, we are gonna start, I always start with the color that's gonna need the most coats of paint. So I'm gonna start with white and do the beard first, um, just because I know I'm gonna have to like coat that white multiple times. <clears throat> that way there's some dry time there. By the way, Target, Bullseye Playground has these little turntables for five dollars. Well, lazy Susan. Um, and I just put some gripper like shelf liner on it. I just laid it on there and just cut it out. Um, and these actually work pretty good. It's a little smaller than the one I normally use, but I kind of like it. So if you see me using that, that's what it is. And that's where I got it. All right. So Hey, Annette from Mississippi, let me know. Yeah, let me know where you guys are watching from. Um, a lot of you I know are watching from Texas, but a lot of you I don't know where you're watching from. <clears throat> hey, Misty. Um, all right, so white, you can use any white, but I, on the list I had the deco art. I like the deco art paint a lot because a lot of the colors, um, they coat very well and you don't have to like, you know, uh, the, the coverage as well. White, however, there's just not a lot of hope for white. It's just, it's just a hard color. Oh, Misty's in California. Hey, Don, his wife's name is Susan and she hates lazy Susan. <laughs> I never thought about that. A lazy, Su be being named Susan and the lazy Susan, that would not, uh, I wouldn't like that either. Um, Okay, so I'm just gonna get like an angled brush. This is kind of like a bigger angled brush um, to do this white. I try to just say match your brush to the size of, the, of what you're painting. So, you know, you wouldn't wanna use a tiny brush here, but you wouldn't wanna use one too big since we're, um, this is in the way here. So, hey, Jennifer, hey, Christy. Christy's watching from Arkansas. Arkansas is so pretty, I love Arkansas. Um, so is California. So I'm just kind of getting a coat of paint here. The first coat of white, I say, I don't try to like make sure all my strokes are going the same way and all that kind of stuff because you're gonna recoat it probably two more times. <laughs> so you can kind of like make sure it's coated really well or the brush strokes are in the same direction on your, um, second and third coat. So a lot of times I will use like a sponge brush or something to do my kind of base colors just because I like that I can use it to get the sides really well, but I'm not doing that today just because there's so many little little things that we're I'm painting around so normally if I'm painting this at home like for an order or something I would just paint all of this white first <clears throat> just because I think I think you get a, a smoother coat when you can um paint it all like you know and you're not painting around a bunch of little things but it might take just I think it's faster, but when you're doing a video because of dry time, um, it doesn't end up being faster. So the actual, the painting process is actually faster when you do it like that, but um, you have a little bit more of a dry time. So if I'm just painting orders, I don't really care. Like I'll just, I'm usually painting like multiple things at once. So there's plenty of time for it to dry. But obviously, we have a live video here, and that's not the case. So I just opted to go ahead and draw that on first. So you want to make sure that this coat of white is not too thick. Um, a lot of people have a tendency to think that the more paint they put on, the better it will cover, and that is false. Um, all it does is just makes the paint so thick that it really takes a really long time to dry. So 
if anybody still paints their own fingernails or you remember once upon a time when you did, you didn't want to put like, if you put a really thick coat of nail polish on your nails, it would take forever to dry. But if you did just multiple like really thin coats, then it would dry a lot faster. So it's, it's kind of the same thing with this. Several thin coats is going to give you the best result. White is just, you know, white's just white. It just doesn't coat very well. There are some, like, I, I will usually use, like, sometimes if you get, like, a chalk paint, like, <clears throat> Walmart has a Waverly acrylic chalk paint um, that I like a lot and I use a lot, but um, it was just easier. I didn't want to send people on a Wild Goose Chase funding all these different brands of paint. So Deco Art is the next best thing. Okay, normally I would just get my sides here and I usually wrap whatever color is on the top. I wrap it around the sides. So I don't paint all the sides just like one, one certain color. Um, this to me is easiest because you're gonna paint your sides one color and paint the top the other color. It gets really hard to like get that looking nice. So and uh, you don't have to paint your sides, but I just think it gives it more of a finished look. I would, but it does take a lot of extra time. One thing I do like about the laser machine, this was not cut out with the laser machine. <clears throat> the laser machine will burn the sides, burn the edges, so they're all black. So it looks like the sides are painted, but they're not, but you don't have to do it. Okay, so when you get your sides, just kind of smooth out the top though, so there's not like a ridge of paint. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna move on to the hat. <clears throat> we'll come back to this in just a few minutes um, once it's got some time to dry. I made a copy of this sign. Hang on just one second. <coughs> I'll do. I printed off a... Uh, I thought I printed off a um, an example. I couldn't remember what green I started with, but we'll just start with the dark greens. <clears throat> so, Latricia's from East Texas. Where in East Texas, Latricia? If you don't mind me asking. Um, okay, so for the dark green, I'm going to use this. Um, <clears throat> it's called Hauser Dark Green. From deco art but really it's just kind of like a kind of a hunter green color <clears throat> and we're going to paint every other stripe with this dark green and i'm going to get a just you could either get a um Either, hey Sherry, Chandler. Oh, I grew up in Canton, so um, it's East Texas, not super East Texas, but you know. Um, so you could either use like a, either a flat or an angled brush that's just kind of a medium size. Um, you don't want to get too big because then, <clears throat> then it, it just gets hard to paint. Like it would be fine here, but once we get up to here, like the brush is just gonna be a little thick and you don't want that. So that's what I'm gonna use. <clears throat> Sorry, it's that allergy time of year. Okay, <clears throat> I turn my sign around, um, depending on where I'm painting, I flip it all around so that I can get whatever angle the easiest. Um, so that you're not like, you know, trying to like paint way up here and you can't see what you're doing and all that kind of good stuff. So that's why I like this little turntable is because it does kind of flip the signs around pretty easy. 
I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can kind of just watch what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna start with the dark green here. I don't know how the example is. I don't, I can't remember. So some colors, just the coverage is really good. And some it's not, their, their coverage is not great. So the number of coats of paint that you'll need will depend on what color you're using and how well it coats. I just, you know, I just make that determination or I determine that just as I'm painting and what it looks like. I tend to be one that ends up putting more coats of paint on my sign than probably what I need, but it's just the perfectionist in me, I guess. But sometimes when you don't put enough coats of paint on your sign, it won't be as like glossy looking. It'll be kind of really matte looking. Even if you spray seal it or put a sealer on it, it's just gonna have a different, it's gonna have a more like a rough look because the wood grain isn't coated as well. So that's why I probably tend to put more coats of paint on my signs. So we're just trying to cover this well and you know get your sides. This is another good thing about this little turntable is that you can um have that room to paint your sides without it being flat against the table. I don't like it's like kind of looks like the screen is kind of like just not freezing, but not real uh, smooth. <laughs> so if you keep me, I keep looking up because I'm seeing my hand like <clears throat> making sure that it's not freezing up on us. I need to just do this because it's faster. So again, don't put too much paint on your brush or I don't, some people do, but it's faster that way sometimes, but except for with white. Yeah, it's freezing. Why is it? Maybe it's just my computer. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just grabbing these sides here. Sorry, <laughs> making everybody really dizzy there. And you can go back and outline these um, where the where that threshold is between colors on the stripes. You can go back through and outline those like black if you want, just to kind of clean it up if you're not feeling good about how straight your lines are. So just keep that in mind and don't stress out about it. 
because you'll drive yourself crazy. And nobody wants to do that. All right, and I haven't got the sides yet on these. Go ahead and do that real quick. And then we're gonna go back to the white and put, hopefully I'm getting all these, I'm even looking. Um, hope, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the white and I'm gonna just do another coat of white. And then we'll come back and do a coat of the light green. Okay, so here we are so far. <clears throat> Hi, Vicki. Hi, Kiki. Um, I didn't put my hair up and I was just wondering how long I was gonna make it without deciding I needed to put it up. Okay, so I don't know why I told y'all that, but. And go back through. And if you need to get like a smaller brush on the these parts, um, then by all means do that. Don't feel like you have to <clears throat> get all that area with a big brush. I'm a little used to using these brushes so I can navigate them in tight spots easily. But there was a time when I would button a different brush. Now, here's where you're gonna to wanna to kind of just, you know, make sure your brush strokes are a little bit, you know, going in the same direction, especially if your paint is thick. So if, if you're putting a really super thin coat of paint on your sign, then when you're done and when it's all said and done, you're not really gonna see the brush strokes a lot. But if you are not, if you're getting your paint too thick, there's gonna be a lot of like, grooves. Hey Morgan, <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of like waves or grooves um, in in the paint. So you're going to be able to see those streaks a lot more as the paint or when the paint is dried just because the tech there's going to be a texture that you're going to be able to see that will be hard to hide. So if your paint is a little bit thicker just make sure you're just kind of um, making sure your brush strokes are kind of, you know, not looking all crazy. Okay. Just kind of going over a couple more spots fast. Um, now, you know, you're going to want to make sure your white is dry before you go over it and do another coat. Um, sometimes when the white is not all the way dry and you just keep putting more paint on it, you're actually going to pull the paint from the underneath layers. You're going to kind of pull that off. Um, it just, it gets it all like, kind of like um, wet wet or damp and it just like it pulls it off and then sometimes if you keep 
like so if you you see a patch and you're like oh I'm gonna cover that up and you keep going over it and it it's almost like it's pulling the paint off so you're gonna have like almost a patch where uh, a bald patch <laughs> kind of like a patch of paint where it's not covered well enough and that's just because it wasn't all the way dry when you went to put an, another layer on it. Other colors don't do that, but white does. There's like some some thickness in the in the white that that just um, that just does that. I don't know. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back through now um, and do as you can see. My dark green is going to need to be coated again because it's. That's not good with me. I don't like that. So um, I'm going to go through and do a quick coat of the lighter green. And this is festive green, but you can use like Kelly green or any kind of, you know, green that has a diff just a different, a good contrast. Or if you wanted to paint the hat solid because the stripes just make you go crazy, then that's good too. And again, I'm just gonna use like a kind of a smaller, I'm gonna use a angled brush just cause that's what I have right here. Um, a smaller angled brush and I'm gonna go through and do my green. I'm gonna do this a little bit fast so that y'all aren't just uh, watching me just base coat a whole sign just multiple times. I could probably use a brush that's a little bit bigger, but I don't really think I have a good in-between size. Believe it or not. So this one actually took me a while to figure out the design on this one. I ended up doing it on my iPad in Procreate. So sometimes when I'm stuck on a design, um, I will just take a picture of either the, the blank wood cut out or maybe like it cut out like in the base sort of colors. <clears throat> and I will pull it into Procreate and just add some layers on top. So Procreate is an app on my iPad that I use. It's kind of like pho Photoshop in a way, um, but it's just for, for not, well, I guess it is. I don't know, you probably use Procreate with other things other than Apple products, I'm, I'm sure, but it's just an app. Um, but it just works with the Apple Pencil, like, so it's basically like a drawing app for those people that don't know. Um, and I use it like literally every single day in my business, every single day. It's the whole reason I bought my iPad and my Apple Pencil see, I bought them in 2017. I'm still using the same one. And let me just tell you, I use it every single day for everything. You can use it for so much stuff. So, um, so I basically, I took, I took a picture of the gnome and I have a, a video on Instagram and TikTok showing how I did how I did this in case anybody's curious and wants to see it. Um, but I took a picture of the gnome and um, pulled it up in Procreate and then just added like a layer on top. And then I just kind of played around with the colors and the design. So I, I just basically traced this, the sign and then I just paint the design on top of it in Procreate. And so it like, I played around with the colors and, you know, I, I had to, you know, mess around with it for a little while until I got a design that I liked. And then I went and painted my sign like that. So it's really nice because in the past, um, you would just have to, you know, paint it and see, which is totally fine, but it wastes a lot of paint and, time I think so anyway I do that a lot with designs if I if 
I'm just not really sure like what color combo to use. In fact, I have a spring sign right now <clears throat> that is sitting over there half painted because I can't figure out like what, what colors to paint it and it drives me crazy. And I have done all kinds of color combinations on my iPad and I still have not committed to anything. I need to just ask you guys if anybody has some suggestions. I hate, I hate whenever I'm like that, like sometimes I know exactly what I want to do and sometimes it just takes me a while to figure it out. Because sometimes like what I have in my head doesn't actually look good a lot of times. So Hey, Diane, you're, you're good. Oh, I'm sorry. Your bro her brother-in-law's in the hospital, so she had to go there. That's no fun. Um, Michigan's so cold, too. Mm. Um, let's see. Hi from Chandler, Arizona. Um, okay, so Tammy, the template is in the notes, um, in the post notes. So when you look at the post on Facebook in the description area, um the there's a link to where you can get the template um emailed to you and then the supply list is on there too so if you kind of scroll down to the bottom the supply list is on there and then we will email you the pdf file um so and then if anybody wants to order the blank cut out again you can get that on my website but you can also if anybody cuts out their own signs, you can cut it out using the template. So I'm just grabbing these sides really quick. <clears throat> Diane said it's very cold, windy and snowy, I know. My daughter lived in Chicago for like a year and we went up to visit her, it was in the summer though, but I just, whew, I couldn't do it, could not do it have to be some more words, mostly warm. I'm not a cold weather person. Like I'm, I want it to be cold like um, Thanksgiving to New Year's. I'm mad if it's not cold Thanksgiving to New Year's, but after that, I'm good. I'm like, okay, I'm done, I'm ready for spring. I don't, I like to be outside a lot, so. When it's cold, I don't want to be outside. And there's just something about like spring and warm weather and just being outside, like, I don't know. Just love it. I could literally just work outside all day long, every day, if it's like the weather's good. Sometimes I'll just get a table and go outside and paint. Okay, so now I'm not, I'm not gonna put another coat of white. I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm gonna have paint all in my hair because I literally, I keep doing this and then I'm like seeing all this paint in my, on my hand. Um, let's go ahead and paint this green too, since we have the brush out and this going. It's not white there. I mean green there. If you get, <laughs> I just like splashed a little um, area of green on here, if you can see, just Grab a baby wipe and it should just wipe off.
Again, you're going to want to make sure this little box is pretty smooth and there's not a lot of, a lot of ridges of paint because we're going to do lettering there and if it's very like lumpy and whatever then it's going to make that hard for you so this green will need another coat as well but just make sure you smooth it and i you know you can just kind of do this until it's all kind of like smoothed out but you're going to definitely want this part to be smooth It's so much easier painting and teaching at four o'clock than um, when I do it in my in my membership. It's seven thirty. Um, we we do seven thirty on Thursday night. <clears throat> and I'm always so tired. Like an hour into it, you can ask the girls in my group. An hour into it, I'm always like yawning because it's just you know I'm tired, but. It's always just hard to find a good day and time that works for everybody because you know this time of year I think on the weekends a lot of people are home but then when it's summertime a lot of people aren't home at four o'clock on Saturday or either outside or you know so it's hard to find a day it's definitely I'm much more awake and alert <laughs> right now than I am at 7 30 at night um okay now we are going to go back through and get do this dark green and and we'll do the shoes too because I didn't think about that and the that the that um okay we'll go ahead and get these first Yeah, these shoes, I painted three different colors on the first one that I did because the first time I did light green and then I was like, no, I don't like that. I'm gonna do black and then I was like, no, I don't like that. Let's do dark green. So, had I thought about doing it on my iPad to begin with, I would have. And that's how I create the templates too, is on my iPad using Procreate. I just draw the design out, the outline of the design, and then you just save it on your computer. And it works nicely. I use everything. I use that app for everything everything. I use it to make stickers, labels, workbooks, um, coloring sheets, any kind of printables, templates. You can, it's just, it's, what I like most about it is it's easy. Like you can just like pick it up and take it anywhere with you. Um, you don't have to have like a lot of supplies. You just have to have the iPad and the Apple Pencil. And it just goes right along with you. I probably should do the nose and the hands, but. So this green is only going to need this one last coat here. And that will do it. Turntable is nice, but it's like I have to hold the sign still just a little bit. I have a bigger um, one and it doesn't do that, but it has other issues that I don't like too. So, you know.
and when the ladies in my painting membership painted the back of her gnome um, with like an Easter, an Easter gnome, and she added like little bunny ears here. This is my screen on my computer keeps freezing. Um, it's doing that on the Facebook too. Um, Peggy, look in your spam or your like junk folder. A lot of times because it's coming from an email that you're, that you're not, your email provider maybe just doesn't recognize as somebody that you've communicated with. And so sometimes it will go to the spam folder because I can't remember if it's which email it's set up under, but it might be set up under like hello at Canvas Sign Designs. And so a lot of times when you have an email that has like an, uh, an address like that, they think that it's promotion and they'll, your emails will, it'll automatically go to spam. So check there. If you're still, let me know if you still don't see it and I'll just email it you to, it to you directly from myself. You know, <laughs> I will email it to you directly. Um, but a lot of times it, it goes in people's spam folder. They're trying to decide for us what might be trash and what might not be trash, which is good. And bad. Okay. And I think this dark green. I think I did the colors the wrong, like, not that it matters, but these colors are a little different than the picture as far as the order of the colors on the stripes. That's because I didn't have a picture, so my fault. I didn't have a picture to look at, but it doesn't matter. Okay, that is good for the dark green. I'm gonna go ahead and just do one more layer here so we can call it a day on that. Okay, now let's get uh, this old white, you know, the white, white. We go over this white one more time. That's it. A lot of painting these signs is just the process of coating them. I wish that like one coat would work and get it. And there are a lot of colors that one coat does work well, but uh, it would save so much time painting if you just had to coat things once, like everything once. My daughter, one of my daughters said to me once, oh, Mom, that's just like you have to paint that sign over and over like four times. Like you, it's like you painted four signs. Basically, you know, it was like, I've never thought about it that way. And you're right. And I don't like thinking about it that way. <laughs> because I had to do like multiple coats on the sign. But yeah. Even I've tried latex paint. And it's still the white still requires multiple coats. I don't know. If anybody's had success with a good white paint that only needs one coat, let me know. But thus far, I have not found it. 
Same goes for using the white markers for lettering. It's just almost impossible to get it like solidly painted, where it's just not like, you know, streaky or whatever, just a little bit. Okay, it's still a little streaky, but we're gonna add some accents on top of it, which will kind of blend a lot of that in. Now, before I do this light green again, I'm gonna go ahead and do the nose and the hands because that also needs a couple coats. Um, and I'm using this warm beige from Deco Art um, to do that. Peggy said she got it, good. Yeah, I need to put like start putting like a little message like, hey, if you don't see it, check your folder because I don't feel like it used to be like that, but like in the last year, it's starting to, I think security measures on like Gmail and stuff are getting a little tighter. So anyway, um, so I'm just using, I didn't tell you all this, uh, like just this is called a filbert paintbrush and it's just, it's just kind of arched at the top. You don't have to have this, but sometimes it makes, it's good to get like a circular. And since these are all like, you know, there's not a lot of like sharp edges, like this wouldn't be a good brush for this because it'd be hard to get that those corners, but because there's no like corners on the nose or the hands, um, this will work good. You could also use like a big round paintbrush. Um, like, like, you know, something like this. That would work good too. Um, but I like to use this because it kind of smooths out the paint strokes just a little bit. So it doesn't look as like the paint's just a lot smoother. So. You can actually get the, also just FYI, you can get the template. The template is a PDF file. And so if you get the PDF file, you can like scale it down when you go to print it, you can scale it down to a little smaller of a scale so that it, it doesn't print out so big. You could even get like a canvas, like one of the, a canvas board from, the store, Walmart or Michaels or Hobby Lobby, um, get a, a canvas sign and you could trace the gnome on that canvas board and paint it on there. If you didn't have a way to cut the wood, um, that is a good little trick you could do. And you also could, if you had like, a poster board or a piece of cardboard like um, from a box. <laughs> you could actually just trace it on there too. Cut it with some box cutters like or an exacto knife and paint that. So don't have to do this on wood if you don't have the ability to cut it out. So I'm just doing another coat on this because it dried pretty fast. A good way to kind of tell if your paint is dry or not is if you kind of just look at it like this with the light shining on it, um, you can kind of see like what parts of it are dry and what parts of it are, are wet. It will be obvious.
section. All right. I think you need one more coat, but I'm going to let it dry just a bit. Now I get the <laughs> light green again. So I just really basically just rotate these colors until I'm done. It's just the fastest way to do it. I'm just going to get this real fast because that only has one coat. Um, it's just the fastest way to do it rather than waiting for one coat to dry. You know. We're going to need more of this. And y'all don't forget, if you have questions, put them in the put them in the chat and I will try to kind of pay attention and, and check every now and again. So I'm just coating this green. And I'm going to actually do this part first, or not first, but next, just because I want to make sure this is dry in time for us to do the lettering on it. So, like I said before, I try to like paint whatever takes the longest to dry or whatever I need to dry the fastest. That's what I do first, just to allow it a little bit more dry time. And again, you can, if you have like a marker, um, you can outline all this when you're done, if you're too like, you know, nervous or worried about whether your lines are straight. I keep looking at my hair and it's just all, it's all crazy in here. Um, <clears throat> if you're too, like that stresses you out, like your lines being straight or whatever, you can just take a marker and outline outline your sign like you know the hands or this box or whatever and that will like just you'll be amazed at how well that will like clean everything up and make everything look so much neater um the signs always look kind of crazy too like until you just put those finishing accents and like just the finishing touches then it all like pulls together and then you're like oh okay but this stage right here, sometimes it's like, you know, looks rough. Uh, so don't feel worried if your sign looks like that, because we'll put all the accents and it will pull it all together. Yeah, so I think I was talking about earlier about when the ladies in my membership did like the Easter, an Easter gnome with the little bunny ears here. So you could paint the back if you wanted to and make it like a different kind of gnome. Like you could do, I've seen them for like 4th of July. Like you could do like, you know, red and do like blue words on here USA or you know whatever um, or you could do happy Easter on that sign or if you want to do your if you want to paint a gnome and whatever color and put your like last name on there you can do all of that because you can just flip it over and paint the other side easily
almost there as far as the stripes go anyway. All right, so I'm just kind of cleaning these sides. This is easier to do it now than going back and doing it after you're done. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna get these, the nose and the hands one more time. And then we're gonna talk about some accents and some other supplies while we let that dry just a bit. Okay, 500 coats later, we got it. All right, so um, the next thing that we're gonna do, um, the next steps is, uh, let me just try to print this out really fast because I need to remember or I'll just look at it. Um, the next step we're going to do are we're going to do some like accenting on the beard. Um, and we're just going to put, I just make it a super light gray. And here we have it. Um, print. I'm sorry, not really great at thinking and doing something else at the same time. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, light kind of some little some streaking on the beard. And I usually use a gray um, or I mix just a little bit of black in with my white, make it really faint. We're gonna do like some accenting there. And then we will outline the hands, the nose, the sign, you know, everything accenting. And then we're gonna do this splatter paint with a toothbrush. Um, and then write our word on here. So for the lettering, um, I had recommended the this marker. This is what I use to do almost every, all the black lettering. Um, occasionally I'll use a paint marker, um, just depending on what I'm doing, but I use this mostly all the time. Um, and there is a link. I don't know if there's a link on this supply list, there should be, um, to my Amazon favorites, like storefront. Um, it's just basically all the products that I order on Amazon. Um, and use a lot, though there's links to them. So you can just purchase them. So you're not having to like guess which is the right one, whatever. Um, so these are linked in there, but they also make kind of smaller ones. So if you have a smaller one, that might be good to like outline the stripes and the nose and the hands and all that kind of stuff. If you have those, if not, you could use the bigger one or you could just use a paintbrush. I typically 
use a paintbrush to accent and do all that kind of stuff. But um, I know that, you know, I'm, that's just what I'm more familiar with and not everybody is good with that. A lot of people like to, to actually outline it with a marker, so. Um, let's see, let me grab this. It's my finished product picture that's cut off because it's not the best one, but whatever. And then um, in this picture that I had online, you see this little shamrock here. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. 12 of them come in a pack. Um, and they're just little foam shamrocks. And when you're done, you can just glue that little, that little thing right there. And voila, it's already sparkly and ready to go for you. And if you wanted to, like you could add, you know, you could add one right there if you wanted to, or this color if you wanted to, or you could just add them all up there. You could even paint this like a solid color and just glue them, you know, all over the hat or, you know, whatever. So just so you know, and I just use either a just a little bit of super glue, or you could use a hot glue gun. Um, I actually, the one that I was selling, I had a bow on that one, but because usually you don't mess with people in their bows, like they want a bow on their sign. But I personally feel like if you put a shamrock here and a shamrock here, like I don't really think it needs a bow. I wouldn't put a bow, but. Um, Anyway, so there's that. That's where the shamrock came in. Now for the beard, we're going to go ahead and accent the beard part. Um, I have a little bit of white here. I'm going to put a little bit more because we're going to need it anyway for, I'm going to put some right here for the um, splatter paint. But I'm going to get a little bit of the deco art black. I'm going to put some over here for accenting, but I'm also going to put just a little kind of a tiny dot in this, okay? And you can either use, you can use popsicle sticks to stir the paint when I mix it, but you could also use your paintbrush. I just don't like it getting like all up in my, like, I don't know, it just makes a paintbrush like too much paint on it. So this is too dark. You want it really, 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 really crazy light because it's going to get darker on your sign. Okay. It's going to show up darker than what you think. So my bad. I put too much, too much white. Oh, too much black. I'm going to put just a little bit more white. And this is giving me way more paint than I need. It happens. I just want that light. So you can see it's really light gray. Um, and then I'm going to get <clears throat> a, a round, have a, a, like a round brush. I might even normally get one just a little bit bigger than that. We'll go with this. So just kind of like a medium, not like a super light detailed brush, but just a kind of a medium size brush. And I'm just gonna dip a little bit into this gray. I don't wanna like dunk it in there and get too much, okay? I always just dab it in there and then just kind of dab it off to the sides. So there's not so much paint on it. And um, I don't know, that's just me though. Y'all wanna do it a different way? Um, so I'm just going to follow this line here and just kind of do that. And then I'm going to go up and down, up and down. And if you want to, these um, accents are really good at hiding like not straight lines. So if you felt like your lines aren't real straight, you can also um, put this accent like right 
like right here where that threshold is between colors. If you just put kind of run your brush over that, then it just looks like an accent and it doesn't look like you got out of the lines. Okay. So little trick. Little trick. Um so I'm just gonna do the same thing over here. All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of like, I'm gonna be a little too dark. Just gonna do some like random. Now, this is a little bit darker than what I wanted it to be. So if you have that problem, just take your brush and just, I mean, it does kind of look cute like a gnome, but um, just take your brush and dip it into that white and then just go right on top of these and it will kind of blend it in a little bit or lighten it up a little bit. Remember, it's just paint. You can always paint over it, so don't get too nervous. If you don't like something, you mess it up, just wait for it to dry and paint over it again. Like it's not final. So that's what I always tell the ladies in my membership. It is not final. Okay, I don't like how they all kind of, <laughs> everything kind of just starts and stops right. Like there's like, I don't know, it's like an invisible line here. So I'm just gonna kind of, um, kind of bring these up just a little bit more like randomly so that it doesn't, doesn't look as obvious. You could even paint this whole beard white and then add this later and wait to paint the nose and then you could streak it all and then do the, that stuff on top of it. Sometimes that's what I do. Just depends, but just giving you all those little tips, little options. Let's see what I have. Not doing bad, about 15. Okay, so um, here we are with that. Now, next we are gonna do the other accents. Um, and I'm just gonna use just a little bit smaller of a brush. This is more of like a detailed kind of a accent brush. It's not super thin, like this might be the, the smallest one, like a, a super small one. So if you can kind of tell the difference, it's not, Big, as big as the one that I use for the beard, but it's not as small as a super detailed one. Um, and I always do white first. Some people do black first and then white. I don't know why I do it like that, but I just do. Um, so first I'm gonna do the hat and I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna dip it in this white. But again, just like with the other, the beard, I kind of blot it off just a little bit so that there's not too much on my brush. So there's just kind of a little bit on there. Um, that way it's not too dark and too heavy. Um, so, and I'm just gonna take it and kind of go in between these two lines, but not pressing down really hard. So just light pressure, um, because the harder <clears throat> you press down, the darker and thicker the lines are gonna be. So if you just kind of, just kind of do long strokes like this. Just not putting a lot of pressure. It's, I just like the way that it looks better. Some people want to accent like this. <clears throat> I 
I discourage that because it's going to, I'll just show you an example. Like some people want to do this. And it just, it makes it look really busy. So if you can use long, longer strokes, it's going to kind of keep it from looking too, like, too busy. Okay. Um, and I will zoom in here. <clears throat> you can kind of see on my brush is on the sign. So I'm just dragging the very tip of this brush on the sign. I'm not pressing down at all. And that's just gonna give you, again, a thinner stroke, a thinner line. Um, you don't want the accents to be like, oh, I'm an accent, I'm on your sign. Like it's an accent that you don't want it to be so thick and so bold that it takes away from the design, um, which can happen. So if you just keep it light, light amount of paint on it, light pressure, that can give you the look that will look best in my opinion. Again, if you wanted to use your marker and just trace, um, <coughs> outline these, uh, you could do that. And then you could just dash a little bit of white on top of it. Um, because if you just only did black, it's gonna look really dark. Like the white kind of brightens it up a little bit and kind of gives it that like little bit of extra pop. Um, if it was only outlined in black, it would just look very like dull and dark. And it just, it's not gonna give you the same look. Um, so if I was not gonna glue my shamrock here, I would just take this white and just kind of do a little bit there like that. My shamrock's gonna cover it, but just so you guys know in case. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing on the nose. Again, I'm just gonna only put a little bit of, little bit of white paint on my brush. And I usually, I'll do kind of like, not the whole nose, but like kind of just either three areas or two areas, little parentheses. Um, yes, Heidi, she said the white makes it look 3D and it looks good. Yeah, it just adds so much. Like anytime I paint a sign before the accents, it just kind of looks, hmm. Once you put the accents on it, it's like, it just brings it to life. It pulls it all together. Um, so I would just kind of do this and this. You could go around the whole thing if you want. I'm always nervous <laughs> that I'm going to do that and it's going to like be off. So I don't like to do that. So I just do a couple little dashes. Um, and then I'm going to do same thing like here with the hands, just kind of Again, I don't want it to look like I'm tracing the, you know, the, the whatever I'm accenting. I don't want it to look traced. I don't want it to look accented. So if you go all the way around it with a solid um, line, then it's really gonna look more traced than accented. And then same thing on these shoes. You could just kind of go here and here. So this is a good little teaching thing, <laughs> teaching moment. Um, so you'll notice I started here and I kind of went here. And you see how the line starts out really thick and it tapers off to really kind of lighter here. If I were to start the second half of the accent here and go here, then it's gonna be really dark to light and then really dark to light, which is gonna look like, um, like it's two different strokes, okay? 
So what I do is I dip it in here. I go from here to here, and then I start here and go back. That way, both lines kind of taper and get a little bit lighter. So it almost looks like, it looks like it's kind of going all the way around the foot, but it's not, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, that's what I do when I accent my letters, when I accent anything. I start from corners and go like in. Um, so just a little piece of advice. So here, I'm gonna start here. So here, and here, so here. That way, it, it, there's no paint right here, but it almost gives the impression that it is like um, contoured around the design. So, and I'm just gonna wait and accent this until I get my lettering, just because I don't, I want this to dry so we can trace the, the letters on here. And um, so I'm just gonna wait on that. Um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna do black accents real quick. And then actually, if it's dry, let's go ahead and trace our words. Make sure that your sign is dry before you do this part um, because you will smear graphite paper all over your sign and you don't want that. One moment. I'm just going to get a smaller sheet of this for this next part. So anyway, make sure your sign is all the way dry. I'm going to lose that turntable um, before you do this next part. So I'm going to take <clears throat> this and I'm going to make sure that this is lined up here and here. You could also cut it right here if you wanted to, or you could cut out this part if you wanted to, just to make sure that it lined up properly. Um, but I am going to kind of check underneath and make sure that, you know, for the most part, it is lined up like it is supposed to be, because you don't want your lettering to be all, all looking crooked and crazy. So once I determine that it is, is in fact where it needs to be, I'm just gonna clip it right here. And again, make sure sign's dry, because then that's gonna dig into your paint. You don't want that. I'm gonna take, I just have a little, this is a really old piece of graphite paper with lots of holes in it, but it's a strip that I know will get over just over the lettering. So shiny side down, it's not so shiny anymore, but it used to be shiny. And I'm gonna trace over these letters. Be careful where the seam is because it's gonna drag your pencil sometimes the direction you don't wanna go just because it's gonna follow the, the seam. I always check and make sure that it went it traced before I unclip it, but. Okay, so now we have our word. Can't really see my word really great because that was an older piece. So the older your graphite paper gets, the lighter it gets, which I actually like it like that. So it's not so dark and so much like carbon looking, um, but okay. So now that is traced on there. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and do that part. So I'm gonna use my black. Where's the camera? Who's black marker? There we go. Again, this is linked in my Amazon favorites list if you need to find it. Um, 
Hobby Lobby used to carry it. Michael's used to carry it. They don't anymore that I know of. They carry these smaller ones, but not the bigger one. So the one on Amazon is good, well-priced. And so a lot of times I will order it there. Sometimes I order it from an art supply place um, because I usually order like them in bulk, but um, they're like six or seven dollars on Amazon. And I will, I think it's linked in the download, but just if it's not, then um, I'll add the link in here. Let me know if you want the link. So, okay, so I'm gonna take this. It's like a big giant brush pen, but sometimes the brush gets starts getting flimsy after a while. And so this is actually an older one. I, um, I'll cut the tip off of it. So I don't like it flimsy. So I'm not sure this one is old or not, but we'll see. I always have them multiple out because I use them so much. But I'm just gonna trace over these words, these letters. I kind of like it when the tip is cut off of it because it's more like a bullet tip um, versus a the brush tip is gonna give you more of a, um, a variance in the thickness. Um, so depending on how much pressure you're putting on it, it might get thicker. Um, and when it's cut, it's more like a bullet tip and it is pretty much the same consistency. So watch your hand rubbing across where you're, where you're writing. This word's pretty easy comparative because it's just kind of mostly print but I'm just going to do like this and I kind of just break up my letters I don't do them like the ease I wouldn't go like this because sometimes pushing up and going around I know is a little bit more difficult so I like to drag my hand down so I'll and just do like this. If you just think of it more as a shape in a letter, sometimes that helps your mind with writing it a little bit better. All right, so there's that. And again, I do all these like lettering templates in Procreate. I create them and then print them off and trace them with the graphite paper. Didn't always do that. Um, but since I have it and have the ability, I've only actually been doing that for like two years. Um, prior to then, I just freehanded it on the sign, which is good because it gave me lots of lots of practice. Um, and then before I started making the templates and procreate also, um, sometimes I would like, like freehand it out on a piece of tracing paper and then trace it on the sign. But now I just use, I just almost, always, I will make a template and procreate, print it off and trace it on the signs. Not because I have to, but just because like, 
you know, I'm working and doing signs. Like, why do I want to like freehand it and erase it and, you know, have to like write it multiple times? Like, why wouldn't I just like make the template, trace the template? That way I know for sure, like it's going to transfer right. I'm not going to have to erase anything. My spacing is good, all that kind of good stuff. So I think a lot of times that is a, common misconception that I'm obviously good at lettering and I can letter um, that everything that I write is perfect and I get it all perfect the first time, but no, not always. Um, Heidi said, those paint pens, you know, these are not paint pens, Heidi, not paint pens, okay? This is just a marker and it is made with India ink which is more pigmented. So that's why you get the nice dark black look to it versus um, other markers. Some markers are made, some, some markers are water-based, some markers are alcohol-based like Sharpie, Sharpie is alcohol-based. So when you use a alcohol-based marker, Number one, the, the black Sharpie is not, it's like a purple black and it's not as dark and pigmented as this. Um, you'll also, sometimes it will bleed. Um, these do not, every now and then, I will get one that does that and like it's just a bum marker. <laughs> but they, I've been using these since 2016. At paint parties, at, like I have done, hundreds of thousands of signs with these. Um, I love them, they're great, but not a paint pen. It's an actual marker. Um, you do, if you, if you use these, you do not paint a sealer on top of it. You'll need to spray seal it because when you paint, do a, a, a brush on sealer, it's gonna, it will pull it off. Um, it's, the marker will not come off any other way. Once you spray it, you're fine. It's not gonna come off. Um, but, you know, just rubbing something on it sometimes will, will do that. So I use a spray sealer. Um, Diane said, I do cut the tip off, Diane, because, okay, I'll use it a few times like this. It's a brush tip. But because I put so much pressure on it, after like three or four times of a new one, that, that the tip starts kind of getting bendy. And I feel like when I'm trying to letter with it, I have less control over it when it's just like flopping and bending all over the place. Um, so I just literally take the scissors and just cut the tip off. So you can see. Like I just cut the tip off and I've used it a lot of times. So it's starting to get that where that tip is is starting to get a little bendy again, but. That's what I do. And I like it better when the tip is cut off. The first couple of times you use it um, brand new, it's like really nice because that the tip of it is very stiff. But as you use it more, it just kind of, you know, it wears it down and it just gets a little bit more floppy. And so I don't like it like that. That's just what I do. Um, but they're the most amazing pens ever. I need to be a spokesperson for these. I don't even know that anybody else uses these for sign lettering other than me. Now a lot of people use them because they've seen me. Uh, people in my membership have used them. I've done some Facebook lives and so people have seen me use them. So now it's like catching on. But I've literally been using those markers since 2016 and I've never once come across a person that does sign lettering that uses those pens. So it was my idea. I'm just kidding, but they're awesome. Um, okay, so now that we have that, now I'm gonna go back through an accent black on my sign. So we're gonna do the same sort of thing. I mean, get my brush, I'm just gonna barely dip. I mean, barely get hardly any black on there. Let's see. Please zoom focus. Well, whatever. If you can see, there's just not really much black on here. 
and I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna accent all the kind of the same places. Oh, I should have done this first. Hang on, uno momento. Let's pretend like I didn't do that yet and I'm gonna get this right here. I'm just gonna outline this. You can outline this with your black marker if you want. That may be easier. Okay. And I think I accented a little bit in the letters. The so same thing, just really brush, like get all the white paint off that you can off of your brush. And I just kind of do some little light accents over these letters. Don't put a lot of pressure on there. Keep it very light because you don't want the accents to draw all the attention. It's just an accent. <clears throat> okay. Now, now we're going to get our black and we are going to accent these areas. So I'm just very lightly. Go around the nose and go ahead and do these hands. We'll do here. Very light with it. Now I'm going to go here. Same method. I got really dark, but it isn't really bad. So <laughs> um, then I'm going to go here. And notice I'm not re dipping my brush in the paint, I'm just using what's on there. Okay. And then I'm going to go along these stripes and bring them up a little closer and do the same kind of thing, just long strokes with your brush, light pressure. Don't put very much paint on there. You don't want to cover up this white too much because then it's going to make it really dark and dull looking. Okay. All right. Now he's ready for the splatter paint. All right. Let's see. Yes, Michelle said Tiffany Queen of my castle. She saw me using them. That's how she use, use them. Because I, um, one of my friends shared my live where I was using them in my live. And I think she's, because she's friends with that person, um, saw me using them. And um, yeah, so I think she's using them now. And then <clears throat> my, uh, one of my other friends, uh, Regina, who, um, is a uh, kitchen confetti. She's been using them and um, uh, several other people. So it's really a good testament to how great these pens are because they are awesome. Um, they're amazing. I love them. I wish I invented them, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> okay, so we are going to now do our splatter paint. Okay, so if you want to like put something over this part, make sure that this is dry, okay? If you just kind of cover this a little bit, like I'm okay if some splatter gets on the nose because then I can cover that up. I just don't wanna have to like clean it up off of here really. So I just kind of cover it up just a little bit. And if you'll just get your, the brush just wet in a little bit of water, but not too much water. So just kind of 
you don't want it like soaking wet because then it's going to be watery, but you don't want it like thick paint. You just kind of play around with it, okay? Um, and I just dip this toothbrush in some white. You could water down your white too, if you wanted to do that instead of dipping your toothbrush. And make sure things around you, you can cover up the keyboard. Um, you know, there's nothing you don't want paint to get on around you because it might get everywhere. Or maybe just do it outside. No. <laughs> but you just take this and kind of just get it kind of close to the sign and just kind of fleck the paint on there. And you can do it as little or as much as you want. Isn't that cute? You could get like a paintbrush and like dip it. You guys probably wanna see what it looks like. Um, you could get a paintbrush so before I saw somebody use doing this on a video, <laughs> um, I was, I didn't know about the toothbrush, but I was get, just getting my paintbrush and getting kind of wet and just kind of doing this, which works too. It puts like bigger um, droplets on your sign. So just depending on the look, the toothbrush gives it a, a lighter kind of snowier kind of a look. Um, so it just kind of depends on the look that you're going for. Um, I, I like both of the looks, but the toothbrush is a lot faster and um, I feel like it's a little bit more controlled. Um, the paintbrush is like, I don't know, I just feel like it's harder to get it into the exact areas that I want, but that could just be me. Um, okay, so is there any questions about that? Um, yeah, Michelle, the, the pins are just great. They're just fabulous. They're fabulous. Um, forever, I just, I always looked around like, why isn't anybody else using these pins? Like, why am I the only person that's figured these out? And I actually discovered these because I was getting so frustrated with trying to find a white marker that worked good. Um, and I, I have literally bought like probably every kind of marker you can imagine throughout the years. Um, but I, I was, it was in 2016, I was like, there's gotta be a better white marker out there, the letter on. And so I would literally would just go to like Hobby Lobby or Michaels and buy like every kind of white, anything that I could find, trying to find something that worked good. And they, they make all kinds of colors in this favorite castell. Some of like the red and the blue are okay. Um, but um, they make a white one. And so I bought the white one and was trying to use it. And it was, it's okay. It's honestly, it's no different than any other, I think a, a, like a white Posca or a Malto uh, paint pen, acrylic paint pen work better. Um, but I was using the white and, you know, I got to reading about it and it was like saying that it was made from India ink and so that's why it's more pigmented and blah 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 blah. So I was like, I wonder if the black works good. So I bought the black and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> like and I just have been I I've, I've been using them ever since. I love them. They're great. You don't have to shake them up multiple times. Um they're they're so fabulous. So anyway. Um okay so now all we have left to do is some of this. So I just said folk art, this extreme glitter. You don't have to use the extreme glitter from folk art. You can use whatever. This is just, you know, they have it at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels. Um, and it's just, it's, honestly, it's just what I had. So I like the extreme because it is smaller pieces of glitter. So um, you can use bigger, like the regular glitter paint, just that the pieces of glitter are bigger. So it just gives a different look. Um, I like the look that this, this extreme gets because it's almost like the, the color, but it's not like so bold um, that uh, it distracts your eye, I guess. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, so 
for this, let me find, I'm just gonna use like a small, like a round brush, another, just another small kind of a detail, but not too small. Um, and I am, hey Jordan, um, I'm gonna use, so you can kind of see this, it's not like super obvious glitter, but it's just enough that it's cute. So I just get a lot on my brush. Um, you don't have to handle this like you did the black and the white. Um, I just get a lot on my brush because I want there to be a lot. And I just, again, go over here and I'll bring it in closer so you can kind of see, if you can see, that it's, it, it's just not, it's not super dark, but it's like just enough. Um, and it looks whitish if you've never used glitter or paint when you use it, basically like Mod Podge in glitter. So you can make your own if you had like Mod Podge and uh, like some glitter. Sometimes I do that, uh, but it, it will dry clear. So I just kind of follow these little lines and it, it's going to soften that black up a little bit too, which is kind of nice. But it just, I feel like a St. Patrick's Day sign needs a little bit of, it needs some gold on there, you know? But with the flex up here, I just didn't want to do like too much, too much heavy gold because I just don't, didn't want the sign to be too busy. You could probably take some of that glitter paint and flex it on there. That would look really cute. I didn't think about that until just now. Um, so I'm going to put it right here and it's going to look really good right there because it's against that green. It's really going to show up. And then I run it across my letters here. So it looks really kind of dark and heavy at first, but it, it dries clear. So don't worry. I don't, um, I just kind of because I know most of it's gonna dry clear, I don't worry too much about if I'm in the lines or not on this. And then going over, back over some of these areas where the glitter is not as heavy. Right, and you could even, you know, just like do like some little lines here if you wanted to. That's up to you. I kind of just, you know, you can't even see what I'm doing because my camera's too close. Sometimes I just kind of do like whatever I feel like. <laughs> like sometimes I just like, sometimes I put some here, sometimes I don't put some there, you know, it just kind of depends on what kind of mood I'm in. And so I'm gonna take this and run it across these, like that, those where the two green colors meet, just to add a little bit of gold in there. So it's really not super obvious if you can see, just, you know, a little bit. You could even, if you wanted to, just, you know, take some around this edge. If you wanted to do that. I like it just because it's almost like you can kind of do whatever you want with it and it's not gonna be super dark and bold. Um, so it's not gonna be obnoxious looking. And then, Put it across this frame here. It just makes everything look cuter. Glitter makes everything look cute. All right, we did it.
that's our sign. Um, I didn't miss any steps, did I? So there, those of you who came in maybe a little bit after, I got these little foam shamrocks from Dollar Tree. 12 of them come and there's two different green colors. But I just take um, some either super glue or hot glue um, and I just glue it right there. All cute looking like that. Isn't that cute? I don't even think that he needs a bow, honestly. Oh, I did get some splatter paint there. I'll have to go back and cover. Um, I don't think it needs um, any a bow, but that's up to you. If you want to do a bow, you do a bow. Um, but I don't think it has to have a bow. I'm just gonna cover this really cute. I mean, <laughs> I was I was thinking about I read Heidi's message and and she he is very cute and I had that in my head and I said whatever I just said. I put the word cute into whatever I said that did not belong. Um so thank you, Heidi. <laughs> um Alicia, my membership is opening up next month, March. Um, so I'm going to be doing a couple more like fun tutorials. Um, my friend, uh, Regina at Kitchen Confetti, she has the cutest, cutest designs. And I am, I bought a couple of her templates. And so I'm going to show up here on Facebook, um, in the next, I don't know, like in a probably, probably once a week. Um, just because I'm trying to start to do that just because it's, you know, um, people are liking it. So, uh, I, I didn't ever do it before. I don't really know why. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm having a lot of good feedback from it and people are liking it. So I'm going to keep doing it. So I bought a couple of her templates and I'm going to paint them on some lives and, um, link them to her templates. You can buy them. They're so cute. She has the best designs. I wish I could like come up with designs the way she does. She's super talented. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll be doing a couple more of these and then the membership is gonna open up. I think it's like the end, maybe the third week in March. Um, so there is a wait list on my, you go to my website and across the top, it'll say like Sign Maker Society. If you click on that, um, it will bring you to the page that just kind of tells about it. There is a little link where you can get on the wait list. And then that way you make sure you get an email. Um, I usually will email the wait list a little bit beforehand just so that they um, are sure not to miss it because I signed up for the wait list. Um, so anyway, that's a good way to know that you're not gonna miss the announcement, um, but Anyway, uh, so that's when that is opening up Tuesday. If anybody is interested, um, the Procreate for Beginners opens up. Um, and that is just an online course. It's going to be pretty much just like the lettering course. Um, it's just to go at your own pace. All the information is there. It's pre recorded. Uh, you can watch it anytime. That will be open for signups for seven days, I think. But if you are interested in taking it, there is going to be an early bird special, I think like the first 24 hours. So if you sign up on Tuesday or you buy it on Tuesday, it's going to be like $20 cheaper. So make sure you pay attention if that is something you're interested in. Um, and that's just kind of teaching you all the basic stuff of Procreate. Um, when I got my iPad, I did not do that. I don't really know why. I guess I just didn't really know anybody that had a course on that. And so I would just, you know, try to like look up on YouTube how to do things or just figure it out myself. And probably three years after I had my iPad and after I was using Procreate, I learned like all these like pretty basic stuff. I had zero. Well, I was like, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do that. And people were like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, but I had no idea because I didn't take a course. I just, so my iPad did all this or the Procreate did all these things that I was not even aware. 
and it would have saved me so much time, so much time. So I was like, I, I need to do this for other people. Just a lot of shortcuts, you know, so you're not like wasting time or, you know, not knowing that it's able to do a lot of things that is able to do. So um, if you're interested in that, that releases Tuesday. Um, I know I'm just kind of like blowing and going with stuff here lately. I feel like everything is just bam, bam, all at the same time, um, but that's okay. Um, Diane says she found them today at Dollar Tree. Thank you. She'll be working on hers tomorrow. You're welcome, Diane. Thank you so much. Um, I hope this was enjoyable to everybody. And um, again, the template link, supply list link is in the notes, the post notes. Um, those are free, get those. Uh, you can cut your template out uh, or cut your wood out with the template. Or if you wanna scale down the template on your printer, you can do that and trace it on a canvas, paint it, use the same methods just on canvas. Um, you can do that, or I do have the blanks that you can purchase on my website if you want to the wood blank and you don't cut them yourself. So however you do it, I would love to see your pictures. So post them if you want, if you feel the need, tag me in them, whatever. Post them on my page, email it to me, send it to me, whatever you want to do. Um, you're welcome, Kay. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, have a good weekend. Thank you, Michelle. Um, have a good weekend. And I probably will be on here maybe doing some Procreate stuff or talking about Procreate maybe Sunday or Monday. Just, um, you know, anybody that's interested in that class, they can kind of just see me. I've, there's a couple of videos on Facebook that have Procreate stuff on them if you want to watch.